What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Saturday, so time for another underdog sponsored video. We crushed the top six bets last week, went six and zero, oh, but a 10 and 0 oh week does remain elusive. Finished seven and three on the top 10 bets last week. So let's see if we can't make 10 and 0 oh happen for the first time this season. One quick shout out before we start. The 20% discount for access to my site next year does expire at midnight on Monday. So you have until then to use a promo code uh, on the website. It's on that home page. You'll see it. It's on the page where you sign up for the site. Also, 20% um, off again expires midnight on Monday, midnight Eastern. After that, don't expect any sort of discounts until this time next year. So who do we like this week? First up, Jacoby Myers, over 47 and a half receiving yards. Myers was forced to play on like kind of a limited basis in weeks 12, 13, 15, missile time early in the season. But in games where he's played at least 80% of the snaps, which is what he usually does that or better when he's healthy, which he's healthy right now. So at least 80% of the snaps in nine other times this season, he set this over in seven of those nine games with one of the unders coming in just that brutal game where they got smoked by the Bears. Just an overall just embarrassing game for the Patriots. One happened there. And then the other one happened actually in a game that I was at when they just steamrolled the Colts in New England. The Colts could not do anything on offense. New England played ultra conservative, just playing the field position game, just basically being like, we do not think they can score more than five points here. Uh, we don't need to do anything. Let's just play it safe. And win this game uh so you know two kind of like outlier games basically all the other ones he's hitting this over uh patriots let's be honest probably not making the playoffs this season but if they want to which you know they still have a chance right it's not like they're at one percent they're like 20 percent right now something like that they gotta win obviously this week so it's a must win game for them uh miami perfectly neutral matchup for wide receivers it's not like the line's so low because they're incredible against wideouts so I mean, I would imagine that they lean on Myers again this week, meaning that 47 and a half is probably like seven to 10 yards too low for like a neutral outcome. He should this hit this over like, you know, 65% of the time, something like that. It's a good bet. Uh, my next favorite pick is Jared Goff under 267 and a half passing yards. Goff has been going off recently, but it's been on really elevated pass play volume. He's thrown for 340 yards. All these in the last uh, three of the last four weeks, at least. 340 yards on 41 attempts against the Jaguars. 330 yards on 39 attempts against the Vikings. And then 355 yards on 42 attempts against the Panthers. So you look at that and you're like, okay, he's going to go way over this total. But all three of those teams rank in the top half in passing yards per game allowed with two of those three ranking the top four. So he's been going against defenses that allow a lot of passing yards. Chicago ranks in the bottom half, thanks to uh, teams running at a league leading 51.55% of the time. Like teams look at the Chicago Bears and they're like, well, let's just run it. And that's probably what Detroit is going to do because that's what they prefer to do. Now they're totally fine going pass heavy, but this is a team when they get into matchups that they know they can win on the ground, they are perfectly willing to run the ball a ton uh, in this matchup. Quarterbacks are 4-11 and 11 on the season in the 15 games, um, hitting the under against this prop, with Goff actually hitting the under in Week 10, even in a 31-30 victory. So I think, you know, you look at this matchup and you're like, okay, yeah, Detroit's probably going to win, probably going to be ahead, and they'll probably run if they do that. But what if it's close? What if it's really high scoring? That already happened in Week 10, and he still hit this under. Quarterbacks just don't hit this under at a super high rate, or don't hit the over at a super high rate against the Bears. Um, and again, it's like, I don't think the Bears have some elite defense or anything. Teams just look at the matchup, and they run it, and they find success doing that. And so why would you go away from that? Like, even looking against the matchup, kind of throwing that out, like 267 and a half is not a small number. That's a pretty good day throwing for 268 passing yards. So we're not asking him to throw for less than 200. We're saying 
in a matchup where they're probably going to run it a ton, let's just think maybe he's not overly efficient. Maybe he doesn't throw for, you know, the like 40 pass attempts he's been doing recently. If he's down closer to 30, I mean, he's probably not hitting this over. And, you know, with them probably winning this game, you've got to think they're probably going to lean on the run. The next favorite is Travis Kelsey, over 72 and a half receiving yards. Kelsey's hit over 100 yards in two straight. And the matchup is like actually pretty decent. Many people are going to think it's a smash mashup because of what, you know, Higby did last week uh, against this team. Uh, and Denver just like falling apart, allowing, what was it, over 50 points or exactly 50 points? Like they allowed 50 to Baker Mayfield and the Rams. So, you know, playing at Kansas City now, we don't have a lot of hope in that defense. But not only is, you know, Casey home, it's a game where they need to win as well. And so you look at like, just think about this offense. In games where they have to win it, who do you think Mahomes is leaning on? Probably Kelsey. And that's just on average. And then you consider the matchup and you think, okay, well, Denver's the seventh best matchup for opposing tight ends, but they're really good at stopping wide receiver production. So not only is it a spot where we think Mahomes is going to lean on Kelsey, but it's a spot where teams naturally throw more to tight ends because Denver's so good against wide receivers. Again, we saw last week that Denver just fell apart, and so maybe Mahomes can just pick him apart when easy. But you got to think, again, in a must-win game, there's no way that Mahomes is leaning on the pass catchers. If he needs to find someone open, it's going to be Travis Kelsey. If the matchup funnels up there anyways... This is a good bet. Um, he set this over in seven of his last 10 games. So we can feel good about this one on average, not even taking any of the context into account. And speaking of must-win games, how about Josh Allen? Like I say must-win also, obviously Casey Buffalo make the playoffs, right? But this these are must-win games for both of these teams. Um, Kansas City, Buffalo, they both really want to win out because that first round buy is incredibly important but not even considering that maybe you're like no buy is not important these teams are going to win that first week okay but these two teams are you know the pretty clear favorites in the afc you don't think they're both looking at this like all right we're probably getting the one in the two scene maybe cincy can jump up if they can beat buffalo but that's why this is a must win for buffalo um, but they're probably getting the one two seed and so if that happens and they're thinking they're going to play each other in the championship game you don't think they want home field. You don't think Buffalo wants home field or KC wants home field in that championship game. Of course they do. So these teams really, really want to win. And so because of that, I don't really see how Josh Allen's passing prop is at 244 and a half yards. Like if you feel better about the 299 and a half um, total yards, you can take that. If you think maybe like it's just more safe because you think Josh Allen's going to run the ball for like 50, 60 yards, do that. Um, I think the 244 and a half for passing is completely safe. Uh, in these big spots, these really important games, they have not been shy about leaning on Josh Allen, throwing the ball. They'll drop back 20 times in a row. Like they do not care. They will just lean on him. And so I would not be shocked if we saw a really elevated pass play rate this week. And the great thing about this prop, I looked at it. Um, I looked at my projection. I was like, oh, this looks like a fantastic one. I thought about it. I was like, okay, it still seems fantastic. And then I was like, wait, did I really boost the pass play rate? Because that's, again, what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to drop back a ton, not run as much, and lean on Allen. I was like, did I do that? And that's why it's going over. And I didn't. I didn't change it at all. So if he drops back a ton, like I think is going to happen, he smashes this over. If they don't, if they still lean on running max, they still run the ball um, like they've been doing historically... It's still a good hit. Those are the props you really, really want to take. It is tough sometimes when we say, okay, we really think this is going to happen. We think this game script plays out. But if it doesn't, we look at the prop and we're like, mm, I don't love it. So it's like, okay, we think this game script happens. Um, we think that this is a smash if it does. But it's difficult because we're not always right in game scripts. So for this one, if the game script plays out the way we think it's going to, he's going to throw it a ton of the over. And if it doesn't, he's still probably going to hit the over. So, you know, it's going to hit plenty. And then you think, okay, you probably want to correlate it because it's not like they're throwing to like seven, eight different pass catchers all for even amounts. I mean, they only have a few players they really lean on. And so I'm looking at the props. 
Um, Diggs will be totally fine to pair with him. Really, anyone is. My pick would be Gabe Davis over uh, 47 and a half receiving yards. If Gabe can hit on, you know, a 40-yard play, a 30-yard play, well, now Gabe's probably hitting his over. It's really helping Josh Allen. Um, you just want to lean on, like, the explosive players because one play can make such a big difference. If Gabe hits for 50, a 60-yard play, which he's perfectly capable of doing, it just correlates so beautifully together. Um, there's nothing about the matchup in particular that points to, like, Gabe exploding over uh, Diggs. I think both will have a really good game. But if we're seeing this elevated pass play rate, if he's correlating really well with Josh Allen, um, and if the line on his own, you know, isn't crazy, right? The line's not 100. We don't need him to drop a nuke. We need 48 yards that you can do on three receptions. So given a reasonable line, an explosive player, that's who I would pair with him. Um, but I'd also just be fine if you're like, no, there's no particular pass catcher that stands out. I just want to take the Allen prop. I think that's totally fine to do as well. Again, I think the Allen prop is fantastic. Another one I like is Tyler Algier, over 77 and a half rushing yards. Um, I'm a little sad, actually. They made it so high. I really thought they'd post it around 65. I guess it didn't look earlier in the week. I didn't have time to. Maybe it was lower. Um, yeah, I was hoping to be around 65 and we'd smash that. But even at 77 and a half, I think that's low enough where we really want the over still. Algier has been fantastic recently, and that's even been in some like pretty difficult matchups and in trailing game scripts. You know, they faced the Commanders, the Steelers, Saints, Ravens over the last month. Uh, the Saints are the best matchup in that group, and they're still just the 15th best matchup for opposing running backs. He faces the Cardinals this week. They're the fourth best matchup. So he's got the best matchup he's had in the past month. He's been really good. He's been taking over the backfield in recent weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, he outcarried Patterson 17 to 14. Last week, it was 18 to 8. The Falcons at this point are obviously looking the future. I thought it would happen earlier, but I also thought that this division wouldn't be like a dumpster fire. I thought someone would have, you know, seven, eight wins kind of at this point, like, you know, be closer to like nine, 10 wins. Like someone would take this over and we would have seen a month ago the Falcons out of it. They're just now starting to get out of it. And so now we're seeing them shift more towards the future. So that's something I got wrong this season. It didn't really matter because I was basically saying you don't need to draft Patterson because late in the season, not going to be as good. That has still happened and he's missed some time. So like the take wasn't incorrect or anything, but I really thought the Falcons would be out of it by like week 12 or something like that. And since they weren't, we haven't seen Algier totally take over. But now that they are out of it and he's been playing so good, they're looking to the future. You know, they're starting Ritter. Um, obviously, London's been fantastic, but they're leaning on him, developing him. And now they're going to develop Algier. And it's not even like 100% develop because like they also just need to know, right? He's not like a first or second round rookie talent. He was a fifth rounder. And so this is something they need to look at over the last two weeks and say, are we going to trust him as our lead back? next season or do we need to add someone else they still have not figured that out yet and so i would expect them to lean on it and then you consider like they've been losing they've been in these you know difficult games they're three and a half point home favorites this week we could easily see algier push 20 22 23 carries and given how good he's been given how good this offensive line is at run blocking given how much they're like just have found success this season in having a ground-based attack if he pushes that number of carries, he's going to hit. He's going to hit the over. And then you consider, okay, again, what happens if we're wrong? If we're wrong here, they lose the game, they're trailing. That's been happening, and he's been at 17, 18 carries, which he can still hit the over on. Of course, we want 22, 23. We want them to be winning, uh, to you know, be finding success there and be leaning on him late. But even if that's not happening and they're not winning, he can still get it because the Falcons love to run it. Another prop that I like is Kenny Pickett, over 176 and a half passing yards. I did a double take when I was doing this one. I was like, did I read that wrong? There wasn't even a two to start out there. Like, obviously, 276 would be absurd. We take the under there. But 176 and a half, like, I don't know. I did a double take. I checked the weather because I was like, oh, is this just like, you know, another hurricane spot or something like that? Nope. Uh, weather's fine. Side note, weather totally fine this week. Last week, it was abysmal. Like, what? 
75% of games had horrific weather spots if they weren't in a dome. And so um, even more than that, like 90% that weren't in a dome. Uh, this week, there's none. There's like no weather spots, no weather concerns. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, there's no concerns in this spot. So I don't really know why the line is so low. Uh, he went way over this total in a freezing matchup last week. Like obviously the matchup was great, but like it was freezing weather last week. It was still like, um, you know, not a great game environment overall, very low scoring game. So smash this over. Uh, he's hit this over in seven of eight games where he's played at least 60% of the snaps. Uh, the one time he hit the under, it was by three yards. Like he's probably going to hit this over. Baltimore has allowed the ninth most passing yards per game this season. Even Trubisky a few weeks ago went 100 yards over this total against them. That was the game that um, Kenny Pickett started, left early with the concussion after like you know one snap or two snaps or something like that. Uh, so as long as Pickett stays healthy, doesn't leave the game early with an injury, he's got a fantastic chance of throwing for more than 176 yards. That's really not that much production. We can be pretty confident that he's going to, you know, they're not just going to lean on Najee Harris for like 30 carries. They're going to try and develop him. They know they're not making the playoffs. They do know, though, that um, they want to win out to secure like a good record for Tomlin. Like they don't want to have a losing record. And so they want to be winning these games. But they're, I mean, they're seven and eight right now, right? Like if they lose this week. Seven and nine, one more week left, losing record. I don't think Tomlin's ever had a losing record. That's like a big thing around the organization. They want to win. They want to develop their quarterback. I just, I don't see why they would run the ball like 70% of the time, especially against the Ravens. The Ravens are a fantastic run defense, not as good against the pass. It just, it doesn't make sense. He's probably going to hit this over. Final prop go over today. And I have more on the site again, completely free right now. Rest of season. If you want to do this in like the NFL playoffs, have some action, completely free. Uh, the fans football advice.com it's always on the bottom of the screen um you'll see like the rest of them i think i don't know there's like 13 14 right now we've gone over like seven or eight of them today um but yeah there's more on the site but final prop we'll do today is aaron Rodgers over 237 and a half passing yards i know he hasn't been fantastic this season i don't know the number but i'm pretty sure he's hit this under more than half the time so you can kind of look at that and be like oh no uh and then you can also say uh I mean, I highly doubt Christian Watson plays. I guess later today for me, uh, yesterday for you guys, we're probably going to find out. I mean, let's be honest, if Watson doesn't practice on Friday, I'm obviously recording this Friday if it goes up Saturday morning. Uh, if he doesn't practice, he's not playing. But I'm projecting him out. I'm projecting him not to play. And so if you want to avoid this spot and say he doesn't have as much like talent around him, he can't hit it, um, fine. But this is a must win for Green Bay. They have a realistic chance at making the playoffs. This game is at home. And it's in a phenomenal spot against the Vikings with everything on the line. I would expect the Packers to lean on Rodgers, especially with you know Aaron Jones a little bit banged up right now. I would expect him to push into the mid-30s. Wouldn't be shocked if he hit like 40 pass attempts. I think they're going to throw the ball a lot. I think the Vikings are going to be, you know, the Vikings are going to be playing in like a one-score game. The game's going to be competitive. So I'd be pretty shocked, even as favorites, which will surprise some people, uh, even the Packers being favorites, I don't think the Packers get up by like a ton here and can easily run it. Like I really think Rodgers is going to have to throw it. And there's just something about Rodgers in Lambeau. Like his worst days are on the road. His worst game in Lambeau this season for passing yardage is 222. If you look on the road, they've played eight road games so far. He has less than 205 in five of those eight. That is absurd. Again, less than 205 in five of eight games on the road. In the home games he's played this season, worst game, 222. That That's absolutely crazy. He has monster home road splits. They're playing at home. Again, must win. Great matchup. I just think this is a no-brainer. You got to take this one. Um, you probably want to correlate it, right? Um, it just would make sense that another team, he's probably not going to spread it around to like 10 different dudes. I mean, he's going to do a little bit to the tight ends, a little bit to the running backs, but he's going to hit his wide receivers. And this is a great matchup for wide receivers. You probably want to pick one of them. Um, I don't see any props. Like I looked on Underdog earlier this morning. Maybe they posted them by the time you guys are seeing. Um, 
I would pick one of them. I think they're holding out for Watson. Like obviously everyone's projection changes if Watson plays or doesn't play. Again, right now I have Christian Watson projected out. And so my projections have it. Lazard, 67 receiving yards. Dobbs, 44. Cobb, 37. And so you can kind of use that um, if Watson is out. Use those numbers. See what lines they post. Just take the best one. In general, like let's say Cobb is at 25. And you're like, oh, that's the best one. I mean, 25 actually, I'd probably definitely take the over there. But in general, like Cobb hitting for 37, 38 doesn't necessarily help Rodgers all that much. It is over. So you do want to lean towards someone like Lazard. Like if they post a Lazard prop and it's 50. Well, you want him smashing the over on 50 because if he's getting to like 70, 80, that's really helping Rodgers. If Cobb smashes the over on 25 for like 35, 40, it's like, okay, but you still need 200 more from Rodgers. So it didn't help out all that much. So you kind of go down in like the correlation from Lazard to Dobbs to Cobb. Uh, but those are the projections I have. Uh, kind of just see which one you like. And I would really correlate that one. So those are my favorite underdog picks this week. Again, more on the website. You can check those out. Uh, remember that you have until Monday at midnight to get the 2023 package on discount 20 percent off that'll be the biggest discount of the year you're not even guaranteed to get a discount like don't expect anything next summer if i do anything it'll be a small one in the spring but don't even expect that like this should be probably the only discount you'll see all year so i wish you guys good luck this weekend that my friends is in this one hope you all enjoy if you did how about hitting the like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here thanks for watching